So just really, really excited because had I had this information, you know, when I got started years ago, you know, it, it would just have totally transformed my life the way it has now. But this is going to give you an unfair advantage. This is going to be able to put you light years ahead of your competition. This is, and you'll see here when we do the tale of two businesses, this is what you're seeing when one business is completely dominating a particular field and they're doing it right away. They know something that the other businesses do not know. And now you're going to be made privy to this information. This is, I would say, life-changing information, but this is business-saving information. And we know that to transfer wealth, we need either real estate or we need one of the uh, the primary asset classes, which includes businesses. I don't think people really understand that. An asset class is something that maintains a store of value, and that's able to appreciate in value and is able to be transferred and can actually transfer value. Okay, so what what people now understand is that businesses can appreciate businesses can transfer value. Businesses are able to go down from generation to generation and they can actually, you know, uh, be used to help build wealth, you know? So, all right, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we just had a few more people coming on in and, you know, congratulations to you for just taking the time out. You know, if you have a business now, we'd love to hear more about it. Go ahead and drop it down in the chat room. Tell us what you do. Tell us where you're from. And you know, you never know someone in the chat room right now, they might see this and might say, hey, I needed somebody in that industry. I need to connect with somebody in your industry. Or they might be able to say, hey, I actually need your services. You know, so um, and we're around like minded individuals right now. Everybody here has a thirst for knowledge. So, you know, it's always great. So let's go ahead and get right on in our business credit masterclass. So let's discuss what we're here, what we're here for. You know, what is business credit? You're going to learn that. You're also going to learn business credit versus personal credit. Big difference there. Uh, the benefits of business credit, 10 mandatory items to get business credit approval, the exact steps, tiers of credit, and when to apply. Then you're going to learn how to start building your business credit right away or get money this week. I'm going to lay it all out there on the line for you so you'll be able to take this information and run with it in your business. Okay, and don't forget to drop your business down in the comment section if you haven't already, because I'm going to be picking from the audience for certain things in this presentation. So uh, business credit is credit that is obtained in a business name. OK, uh, business credit plays an important role in a business's success. And with business credit, this is where the business actually builds a separate credit profile using the EIN instead of the SSN. So if we all think of an EIN as a social security number for your business, now you start to understand, well, hey, I'm using that social security number when I'm applying for credit for myself. Now you you um, understand that, hey, I'm going to be using the EIN when, when I apply for credit for my business. And this is based on the business's ability to pay, not the business owner's ability to pay. This is a key difference with building personal credit versus business credit. And you'll see more in just a little bit. Uh, but you may be asking, hey, should I even put up with the, you know, building business credit? Should I even go through all the steps that you're about to give me? And listen, it doubles your borrowing ability. So you might be saying, listen, Jerry, um, I'm OK. You know, I, I have reasonably good personal credit. You know, I went into Best Buy, you know, and, and they gave me a thousand dollar line of credit. So I used that to buy some, you know, computers for my business. Right. Well, literally, you know, if you turn around and go back in Best Buy and use your business EIN, well, not only will they give you like three thousand, five thousand, ten thousand dollars as a line of credit just for starting out. But now it's also separate from your personal. OK, and it makes your business more lendable. Now you're able to get high li limits in lines of credit in your business name, not your personal name. And this is the only financial solution that you can get regardless of cash flow. 
regardless of collateral, regardless of consumer credit. I know somebody just got excited right now because consumer credit was holding them back in their business, right? You might be somebody that is, uh, you know, fresh off of a divorce or foreclosure, um, had some things happen, a repossession, and now you're being restricted in building your business credit because your personal credit, you got to drag that around everywhere. You don't have to do that when you build your business credit, all right? And we'll show you exactly how that works. That means any business can obtain it, even nonprofits and especially startups, all right? So let's see what kind of businesses we have here in the chat. All right, so we have um, an event space owner, okay, a marketing coach. All right, appreciate you, Anton. for coming on out. Coach Brian, relationship and dating coach. Oh, okay. All right, we got some got some heavy hitters in the in the room tonight, and we have a financial coach in the building. Y'all shout out to uh, Jamil. All right, and Vernus uh, Furniture Store. Okay, all right, definitely, definitely important, important. Now I tell you, you're probably getting hit up by all kind of Airbnb people on a daily basis because guess what they need? Furniture to stock their um, their short term rentals. You know, and guess what they're probably going to be using after they see something like this? They're going to be using their business credit to do so. All right. But hey, business credit versus the personal credit. Let's get down to it. Right. It's, this, it's a celebrity death match between the two. Which one do you want? Which one do you want to rock with? Well, business credit scores are primarily based on just one factor, y'all. One factor. Y'all want to know what that is? It's payment history. And that's it. OK, with personal credit it's it's based on multiple factors. So not only do you got to keep up with the payment history, but you got to keep your utilization low. You can't use the full amount on your credit cards because the more you use, the more it hurts your score. Well, with business credit, the more you use, the more they give you because they're not looking at the utilization at all. They don't care if you max out your business credit card. OK, they just care if you make that payment on time. Length of credit history, they don't care that you just started out, all right? Uh, accumulation of new credit, they're not caring that you're putting inquiries and applying for new credit when it comes to business credit. The credit mix, they don't care that you got a car in your business name and a mortgage, well, you can't have a mortgage in your business name, but that you have a commercial building in your business name. They don't care that, they don't care about none of that. All they care about is, hey, is this business paying its bills on time? Much, much easier to build. So this is what a business paydex score looks like. So a perfect paydex score is a 100, all right? And it goes all the way down to zero. You don't, you don't want to be below an 82, okay? So 82, 83, that's a perfect uh, business credit score. But a 100 means that your payments come in early. That means five to 10 days early, your payments are there, all right? So that means that you got to make these payments 10 to 15 days early. So that way it has those five business days to process, right? Uh, a payment is prompt, meaning that it's right on time, you get an 80. So remember, I said you got to be a little bit higher than an 80. If you want a perfect business credit score, you got to be a little bit higher than an 80. So you can't just be on time. You got to be early. OK, payment comes in 14 days beyond the terms. Well, now you got a 70. 21 days beyond the term. Now you got a 60. We don't even need to go lower because, you know, you want to be 82, 83 and above. All right. So once you build your business credit, there's no PG, y'all. You know, and if you've been around this space and you know PG, that's like one of your favorite words. That means personal guarantee. All right. We're not talking about movie ratings. OK, you're not liable for your debts. Your business is. OK, this right here is called the corporate veil. This is why you have an LLC, because it protects you and your personal property from the business and what the business is able to do. Someone slips and falls at your business, they're able to sue your business, but not you personally, even though you're worth personally a few million dollars. Your business just started off only grossing, uh, you know, 50K a year. All right. They're not going to get much out of you because you have that LLC. But if you're not building your business properly and you've commingled your funds, you're mixing your personal and your business credit all up. Well, then that's going to give the courts the ability to pierce the corporate veil and go directly at you but not for everybody that's hearing this message. Y'all are going to learn how to separate everything. So that when they look through the business records, they don't see your personal accounts. All right. 
Now, initially on some accounts, you have to start it off this way, kind of like co-signing for your child when they go out to get that car, you know, co-signing for a family member or a friend who just now is establishing their credit. Your business is just now establishing its credit. So for some things, you may have to partially guarantee, but eventually you won't have to do that at all. So let's get into the actual scoring of things, okay? A business can be issued a failing score if, even if it has no reporting, okay? So it's a little bit different than your personal credit because they give you a, a, a few points on your personal credit even if you don't have anything reporting. But this makes your business look unestablished, possibly on the verge of filing for bankruptcy if you have no trade lines reporting at all. As you can see here, this business is um, looking at a 28 medium score risk, high to medium risk. And then on the Paydex score, they weigh down there with a six. Like that's, that's terrible. Credit limit recommendation, they still are able to give you at least $1,000 though. OK, so, you know, if you have a failing score of personal credit, you're not getting nothing. But at least with this right here, we're going to show you how even adding one account and having that one account report to the business credit reporting agencies can turn you into a great score. So, for example, this business has now one net 30 account on there. Now they jumped up to twenty five hundred. They're really low risk now. And they're all the way up here out at ninety six on that paydex scale. All right. So as you continue to grow your account, guess what? Now you, this person has three lines, three different items reporting. 15,000 is the credit recommendation now. Now this business here, they kept growing. And you're going to see more about this business in a little bit. But they kept growing. Now they have about a dozen items. And now they're up to $724,000 in lines of credit. Now what's unique about this is say this person wanted to sell their business. Don't you know all these lines of credit move with the business? So now you can actually sell your business for more because you have an asset on your books, which is credit. Now, of course, not if you're using all the credit, okay? But if your credit is low, now all that extra potential is now making that business more valuable. Would you rather buy a business that has a $100,000 line of credit that it can use or buy a business with no established credit at all? Well, of course, you would get the one with the established credit. So why wouldn't they sell it at a premium? You see what I'm saying? So this is this right here helps you out. And, you know, for the person in the back of the room that's saying, well, you know, this sounds pretty illegal to me. You know, this sounds like, you know, you're scamming people. You got two separate uh, credit scores. I, I heard you can only have but one credit score. Well, Experian is one of the authorities in the credit realm, right? They're a business credit reporting agency. They're also a personal credit reporting agency. They have a blog up here that says how separating your business credit from your personal credit can help you grow your small business. NASDAQ, an index of mutual funds, you know, they have a blog out here that says your small business should have its own credit score. You know, so I just want to go ahead and kind of dispel that myth and kind of make it more at ease to building business credit because this is what all the big dogs are doing. You can build business credit fast, no collateral requirements. It's easier to grow a business when you have business credit, and it gives you the competitive advantage to decimate the competition. Listen, when you're trying to build a business, no hate or no shade to everybody else that's in your same industry, but you're here to dominate, and you're competing every single day for the attention of the same group of people, the same customers. So you want them to see your product. Listen, I don't want to take food off your table, but my product is the best. My customer service is the best. But how are people even going to know that if this person is over here making a lot more noise? Their product is higher quality because they're using business credit. Let's look at the tail of two businesses here. So Coffee Shop A and Coffee Shop B, you know, they, they lost their ease on here. So don't worry about that. But Coffee Shop A started with savings and personal credit cards, where Coffee Shop B started with business loan. And they started with business credit. So that sets the tone. A, hey, you got it out the mud. You, you had a savings account. B, you listen to Jerry's advice here. You started with the business line of credit. Now, coffee shop A, listen, they, they got espresso machine that they could afford. That's great. But coffee shop B, they got three top of the line espresso machines with no money down. Already, you're already starting to see, look, that, that's an unfair advantage. Uh, coffee shop A, hey, their staff just wears generic aprons. Hey, as long as you come to work with a brown apron, you're good. Coffee shop B, everybody has embroidered aprons with their name on it, the logo. 
Okay, which coffee shop are you starting to say, look, I'm going to go to this one, right? Coffee shop A, they source their coffee beans from the local grocery store. Again, nothing wrong with that. Entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship is all about being resourceful, right? But how can you compete with somebody that's importing gourmet coffee beans at wholesale prices? So they're, they're paying the same thing you're paying at the grocery store, but because they get it wholesale and they can buy more in bulk and it's a higher quality, listen, you can't compete with that. And Coffee Shop A, their marketing budget is basically word of mouth, meaning that there is no marketing budget. That's the last thing that people have saved for. They get all the equipment, they get the staff, they get everything, but then they don't have but a little bit of a shoestring of a marketing budget, right? Well, Coffee Shop B, they got the wrapped vehicle, the neon lights, the commercials, the social media ads. So which business do you think is going to stay in business for the remainder of the year? Coffee shop A or coffee shop B, right? Shout out to Monet Long in the building. Okay, we got millionaires in the building. I love it. I love it. Well, obviously, coffee shop A is going to go out of business, right? So what's going to happen? You're going to end up possibly filing for chapter seven, and that means liquidation. So what that means is now they're going to be selling off their assets to try to recoup some of the funds to pay off the debts that they have. OK, so now what also that means is coffee shop A can be bought out by coffee shop B. Coffee shop B is like, you know what? That is a nice espresso machine. Let me go ahead and get that for 80 percent off. That's a nice location, too. Might as well. Let's go ahead and acquire that location. So now not only did business credit help them to dominate the competition, but do you think they're spending their hard earned cash to acquire this liquidation sale? Absolutely not. They're building I mean, they're using the business credit that they built to acquire the competition's leftovers as well. Still haven't even touched their cash. So I hope that draws a clear line to help you see how business credit is just going to help you dominate. But every successful, um, highly successful business in America has business credit. So don't think that this is some kind of weird thing. Pilot travel, public supermarket, 171 trade lines, Dell, 83 trade lines, Microsoft, 131 trade lines. Facebook, 40 trade lines. What about Apple? 138 trade lines. Now, what do you think? Like, what are these companies using trade lines for? Well, you know, Apple has to kind of source a lot of its uh, materials, its raw materials, right? They have to buy the computer chips that, or, or actually they develop their own computer chips, but they have to buy like the glass. They have to buy the, the, um, the material that they're using to design the phones even? Or what about their offices? Have you seen the campuses that Apple has? Listen, they have to be able to furnish all of those places. Do you think that they're spending their cash on furniture? Absolutely not. They are building their business using business credit. And the mag daddy of them all, Walmart, 80% of their cash injection comes from business credit. So I just want you to picture the next time that you go to Walmart, put 10 things in your buggy. No matter what category they are, put 10 things in your buggy. Guess what? Walmart has only paid for two of them. <laughs> They're waiting on you to come down here with your shopping cart, pay for the items so they can take your money and then go pay their vendors and they keep the cash. That's genius. That means they didn't even spend their own money to grow their business. 513 trade lines. That's how you should be growing your business. So how do you build business credit? Then this is the part where you kind of say, okay, that was a lot of information. Now, I wrote some of this stuff down, but how am I going to use all this stuff? Well, now make sure you grab your pen and paper if you don't have it, because now I'm going to give you the blueprint to getting the mandatory items out of the way. This is the hard stuff. Okay, I'm going to give this to you because I believe in you. I want to see more businesses succeed. All right, I'm going to give you all of these steps, and then I'm going to show you how we help you with all of these steps. All right, so step number one, develop a business plan. OK, so this is really, really important, especially if you're looking for other people to invest in your business. OK, so you got to have the things ma mapped out like the startup costs. You got to have the things mapped out like the customer base, your target audience, your mission statement. Do you even know what you're in business to do? And, and you can't put to make money. OK, <laughs> it's got to be bigger than money. What is your mission statement? All right. We can help you with the business plan. No problem. Step two, your business address. Wait, business address. Why well, I got to have a business address just to get started? Well, listen, 
for the rest of this presentation, I want you to put your mindset as the mindset of the lender. You have a few million dollars, maybe a few billion dollars to invest in small businesses. Now, are you going to, um, every time an application comes across your desk, are you going to just say, okay, they say, here's the address. Okay, here's this. Well, they need 50,000. Okay, boom, 50,000. And give that business that can be separately held liable for the debt, $50,000, just so they can run off into the sunset and the person is not being held personally liable for the debt? No, <laughs> you're going to take that application. You're going to look at every I and every T on there so you don't what? Lose money. Lenders like low risk companies. They like low risk applications. So you send me your application one of the first things I'm going to do is Google your address, okay? These applications don't go into some, you know, pie in the sky. They go to a person. And just like being human, you're going to sit there and evaluate that application. Let me go ahead and search this out and see what this business is all about. Now, they pull up the business address that's on the application, and they see your house. They see an apartment, or they, or they even see a mansion, right? It don't even matter what kind of place it is. It's a residential uh, address. They're going to say... That don't look like a business to me. Next, and throw it out because they've got so many applications to deal with. So what you want here is a business address that is separate from your personal address. It don't Even if it's um, separate, it still cannot be in a residential area. They want to look it up and see a public place with public traffic, parking spaces for, for cars. That's what they want to see. OK, so how do you do this if you're just living at home and you're running out, you know, running your business out of your basement? Well, you get what's called a virtual office, okay? So there's a lot of different suites out here that will sell you a virtual office and let you use their um, their virtual office, their office space just to receive mail. And that's really all you need is a public place to receive mail, right? So look up virtual offices in your area. If you need help with that, get in contact with this, okay? Opus is another great resource for virtual offices. Okay, now you do not want to use a PO box and you don't want to use, um, there's some other virtual addresses out here. You don't want to use a virtual address. You want to use a virtual office. Key difference with that. Get in, get in touch with me or whoever got you on the line if you need more of a distinction with that. But we help you with that too. Now your business entity is next. So after you got your business address, now you want to nail down your business entity. And honestly, these two should be done kind of at the same time. Because the business entity is the name of your business. And before you name your business, you want to make sure that nobody else has that name. So you want to search with your secretary of state for your business name. You know, if your business is, you know, uh, Vernus Furniture, you want to look it up before you go haywire with that name and go running with that name. <laughs> go with marketing and putting it on everything only to learn, hey, somebody else has your name. Now you just do all this free marketing materials for somebody else's business. Okay. So once you see that that business is available, then you can go back here, get your business address for it. Once you have your business address, then you can finish your paperwork for the business entity. This includes putting that business address that you just had, putting that on the application for your LLC. Now, LLC is really, really easy. You know, that's the most basic entity. All right. But maybe you have a partnership. Now, partnerships are more tricky to get funded. So if you can avoid a partnership, avoid it, okay? Because you don't want to have to go chase down your partner every time you need to do a business loan application because they're going to need everybody's information because they're trying to do what? Lower their risk, okay? You also have a corporation. So if you're, once you cross, I say once you cross a certain revenue line, that's when you want to consider a corporation, okay? The only thing with corporations is that they're taxed twice, OK, so your corporation gets taxed and then the money that you get from your corporation is taxed, whereas an LLC, you just get taxed. It's a flow through entity. So you want to get with somebody that can help you with the corporate structure and structure in your business. Get in touch with the person, the financial consultant that got you on here. We can help you get that business entity set up. We even have places where you can get it set up. and You don't pay any additional fees except for the state filing fees that can save you three hundred, four hundred dollars right off the top. All right. But very important. Get that business entity set up because now you're going to take that. And you're going to get your business phone number. Now, you got to get your entity set up first because you're going to apply for the phone number with your LLC. OK, 
So with this, you get a cell phone. So Sprint, um, T-Mobile, Verizon, AT&T, they all have corporate divisions. You don't want to use your personal line with your business. But one more thing that you need is an 800 number. So businesses, um, lenders love to see 800 numbers. Why? Because they're trying to lower their risk. And nobody that is a person has an 800 number, okay? As like a girl ever asks for your number and you're like, oh, my number is 800, fly guy. No, nobody has that. Right? It always starts with the area code and such and such. Now with a business, they want to have a toll-free number because they're getting calls from all over the United States or even the world. So that's what makes you a different, that's what makes you look different on paper when I get your application and it says 800, I'm like, okay, this person is really in business. All right. Next, hey, got to get your email and your website. So this right here just means now you have uh, the ability to put that phone number that you just got on this website here. Now, once, one thing that's really, really important, all this is important, but one thing people sometimes miss is the fact that your email address can be a red flag. If you have a Gmail account, AOL account, Yahoo account, right? All these are free. I can make five of these in one day if I wanted to. You know, I might have to use a different computer because after a while they say, how come this guy is generating all these? They might shut me down. But I can I can literally sit here and make five different email addresses. Won't cost me anything. And I can apply for business credit and business lines of uh, business loans using these email addresses. So there's no real skin in the game. So when I get an application and I'm the lender and it says, uh, let's, let's see who we have in the coach Brian at gmail.com. Right. I'm gonna be like, mm, nah, it doesn't sound too legit. Now what would sound legit to me? What would sound legit is coach Brian at coach Brian Thomas.com. Wow. That's professional. I know that he has a website, he has his own domain, he's doing business on a virtual scale, and he doesn't have just like a free email. He actually went out and purchased his domain. You can't do that five, six times in a day without spending some change, okay? So that makes you look more established, and it makes you look like you're really in business. And we all know that if you don't have a website, you're not really in what? Business, <laughs> okay? So again, the lender's going to say, hey, this person's probably more... Uh, real than that last one I threw out with the Gmail. And now you can get your EIN number. Okay. So you went through all those steps. Now you can get your EIN number. So many people want to get the EIN number right away before they even file for anything because they just hear that buzzword, that EIN, and they know they, ha they need it. But you want to do all these steps before even securing your EIN number. Now, some, some phone places, they're going to want your EIN when you go to apply for your phone. Um, but by then, you've got your virtual address, so that's fine. As long as you get your virtual address before um, your virtual address and your LLC before getting your EIN, you'll be golden. But I wanted to separate this because you can see how important it is to get all this stuff out of the way first. EIN number is free. Just go to irs.gov <laughs> and you'll be able to get your EIN number. You don't have to pay someone 300 bucks for an EIN unless they're doing other services but you can get that right here yourself. Just make sure you use your virtual address. Now let's get your licensing and any other documents that you have, okay? So if you have, depending on your business, you might have a restaurant. You're gonna need your serve safe. You're gonna need uh, your sanitation grade. You know, you're gonna need all these different things. So just uh, keep that in mind. You know, what other businesses? I've seen some other businesses pop on in. You can put your business down in the chat. So that way I have some more business to play off of. We're almost done here. But, um, you know, you, you if you're in business, you already know what license and what documents that you need, right? So step eight, your 411 business listing and congruency. So we know what the 411 is. That's a directory of businesses that we can call the local company, a phone company on and say, hey, I need a barber in this zip code. And then they give me a list of barbers. That still applies today, y'all. Ain't that crazy? It still applies today. We just don't use it the same. Now, what is really being used for is by lenders to verify that this business has a public listing. 
but you want to keep your public listing congruent with everything. So your Google listing needs to be the same as what's on Facebook. It needs to be the same as what's on your 411 and the white pages. It, and the address needs to be the same too. So sometimes you'll see a slight variation in the address. Like you might spell out the word drive instead of putting DR. That's a red flag, believe it or not. So you want to even have the address the same exact way on each application and in each public listing. That's another gem right there. Step nine, your business bank account. We can't talk about funding until you have a business bank account. Why is this? Because lenders are trying to lower their risk. And if you've already gone to this step to have a business bank account, then the bank has already went through steps to make sure that they lower their risk as well. So now the lender's like, well, hey, the bank trusts them, then I trust them too. But guess what you need before you can open up a bank account? Well, you got to have that virtual that that uh, business address, whether it's a virtual office, right? You got to have that EIN, you got to have your LLC, you got to have a phone number, you got to have all those things that we just talked about. But you also have to have something called an operating agreement. Okay, so your articles of incorporation, that's what you're going to get when you get your LLC. The state's going to send you something called an articles of incorporation. That's just like the public uh, display that your business is legal, but you also have something private and that's called the operating agreement. That's where you spell out who are the officers in your business, the day-to-day -day things, your minutes and things like that. And that's where you set up certain things that the bank needs. All right. But look, look up, you can look up what an operating agreement is. There's templates out there. And of course we can help you with that too. And the last step here is get set up with your business credit reporting agencies. That's the uh, CRAs and get your reports. So just like with personal credit, well, we have Equifax, TransUnion, Experian. With business credit, we have credit bureaus as well. So Dun & Bradstreet, and here's these two you heard before, Experian and Equifax. These two companies actually have a corporate division as well as a personal division. But Dun & Bradstreet is actually the world's largest credit reporting agency because they house all of the businesses that you can ever think of, they have a report for. Now, with Dun & Bradstreet, you're gonna actually get something called a Dun's number. And that's probably one of the mo most important things that you need in business. Every, anytime you go to apply for a trade line, they're gonna ask you for that Dun's number. So that way they can look you up in the Dun & Bradstreet database, all right? But each report can be a little bit different when you're looking up the uh, different business credit reporting agencies, like they got an IntelliScore, they got the Paydex score, just like they have FICO 8, FICO 9, Vantage score, and things like that. So uh, you, either way, you just want to make sure you follow these steps here, and we're going to get you first approved for vendor credit. Vendor credit. So vendor credit is the first step here. So I hope you're still writing, because now we're in what's called Tier 1 business credit. This is where you get business credit, regardless of how long you've, you've been in business. There's vendors out there that's going to give you a shot. Only problem is 97% of them don't even report to the business credit reporting agencies. So that's what I call hustling backwards. All right, we're going to help you out here, give you a list of at least a few of them. Um, but I want you to understand where the net 10, a net 15, and a net 30 account are. So whenever you see net and then a number after it, that means that you can... Um, walk away with the goods and services from a particular business, but pay for them 10 days, 15 days, or 30 days later. Um, Amazon has a, a net 55 account. So I can purchase something from Amazon, but in 55 days, I have to pay it back. Well, that's where that paydex score comes in. Because if I wait until the 30th day to make that payment, well, I'm going to get an 80 right, on that transaction. But if I pay it back like on day 30, well, that's prompt. I'm going to get 100 on that transaction. So that's what a net 10, net 15, net 30 means. Now, you want to avoid net 10, avoid net 15 like the plague. Because guess what? By the time you get the product and check it out and make your payment, that payment is either going to be prompt or it's going to be late. <laughs> okay, so that's how they trick you with that net 10 and net 15. Just avoid it all together because you just can't be prompt with the payment on it. All right. So with this, again, they don't care that you're just getting started. They don't check your personal credit. Keep your social security number off of these applications. 
All right. And don't apply for big stores like Staples. And if there's a commercial for it, don't apply for it. All right. We're going to tell you the ones that you can't apply for here. Uh, Quill Office Supplies, write that one down. They actually report to Dunn and Bradstreet. Uline Shipping Supplies, they also report to Dunn and Bradstreet and Granger. OK, now I want to encourage you to get things from these places, at least spend at least one hundred dollars at each one of these places. So that they can go ahead and report your transaction to Dun and Bradstreet. And as you saw earlier, just one transaction is going to jump your business credit just like that. All right. Now you got three things reporting. OK, you can also uh, look up Shirt C. Shirt C. Uh, shirt S Y. They do um, business cards, they do shirts, embroidery, all kinds of things, but they also will, will report a business, um, uh, report to the business credit reporting agencies. Only bad thing about those guys is they have an annual fee, okay? So you wanna look at all the terms and conditions because these businesses know that you're out here trying to build your business credit and they'll, they'll run game on you, you know? But it's important, you gotta go through it. Right? You got to go through some of this pain here to get it going. All right. Appreciate you, Ms. Foster. <laughs> so uh, so other than that, now we are going to be able to show you how to bypass tier one. All right. If you want cash now, say cash now in the comment section. All right. Because that's the slow road, like getting this and getting that and building it up. Man, that's the slow road. But listen, everybody needs to go down the slow road, just like you built your personal credit brick by brick, account by account. But there is a way to kind of bypass that for now and get to the money now. OK, I see cash now. OK, well, guess what? We're proving people it's 150000 in cash right now. 0% financing for 6 to 18 months. Startups are welcome. No cash flow, no collateral requirements, but you got to have good personal credit. Oh, man, Jerry, I know. I knew it. I knew it. Listen, if you have good personal credit, remember I said you can use that to jumpstart your business credit. As long as you have a 700 FICO and um, or a co-signer, that's what a guarantor is, a co-signer with a 700, we can get you some cash now. So get back in touch with whoever got you on here. And, just, and, it, and it doesn't even hurt your credit score to apply. You know, even if you have terrible credits, apply anyway. So that way you'll know what is holding you back on your personal credit. All right. But now tier two, once you got five of those vendor accounts, you can apply for the revolving accounts here. So this is tier two, revolving accounts, if you're writing that down. Okay, this is credit from places like Amazon, Best Buy, Staples, Office Depot, Okay, remember, you got to have those five first or else they'll deny you right off the bat because they don't see enough trade history. They don't see other people co-signing for you enough. They don't see these other businesses that have said, hey, we gave them credit and, you know, they paid us back. They don't see them. They're not going to fool with you. OK, so um, once you move on to um, uh, tier three, this is when we start talking about fleet credit. You got to have 10 revolving store accounts first. So, so you had 10 revolving accounts. You had five starter accounts. So how many accounts do you have now? Total 15. So you need 15 things reporting before you even step onto that car lot and try to get a car in your business name. Or you have to have excellent personal credit. Right? And sometimes you got to have both <laughs> to put it in your business name, just depending on where you are. Okay, so we know that um, Ally is a great business credit um, resource to get a vehicle in your business name. That's A-L-L-Y. They do um, give you a business vehicle loan, strictly uh, dependent on how you've built your business credit, but they can also leverage your personal credit if needed. But this fleet credit is where you buy, repair, maintain vehicles. That's where you see these gas cards. You know, I know there's companies out there that'll give you a secured gas card. You pay them 300 bucks and they give you like a $500 gas card, something like that. Um, that that's great. You know, that, that kind of thing helps you to build your business credit, but only if you're really going to use it. I never recommend anybody to get something just for the sake of building business credit. Don't do that. You know, you want to be wise stewards of your money, growing your money. Uh, so, you know, you want to be very careful with just getting a business credit account just because, okay? But once you're responsible with fleet credit, you can move on to cash credit. Somebody put that in the comments because that's my favorite. Tier four, cash 
credit. All right, those are my two favorite things, cash and credit. I like cash and credit. Put it together and you got cash credit. Come on. Listen, this is where a Visa, MasterCard, Amex, and the like is in your business name. Uh, you have a $10,000 limit, a $20,000 limit, $50,000 limit, and it's all ran in your business name. That means you can run up that limit all the way to the max, and it's not going to report to your personal unless you default on it. Now, if you go a few months without paying that bad boy, it will show up on your personal credit, but the inquiry is not going to show the uh the utilization is not going to show and so that's where people start doing um they start transferring the balance from their personal over to their business because now it lowers your utilization on your personal which looks good on your personal credit score and it's hidden over here on your business credit because remember they don't even care that you max out your card all right but just keep in mind there's a balance transfer fee usually it's like three to five percent or something like that but um, still save a lot of money, especially if you pay 0% APR for a few months, it's golden. But just keep your social off of these applications uh, when you're applying for tier four, and we'll let you know when you get there, but use your EIN to apply. But you know, all this basically is just to say, y'all, um, it can really pay off to go through these steps and set up your business credibly, okay? What, is, what does credibly even mean? Well, I mean, credibly just means that you are believable, you know, credibly, but if you, what is, what is something that's incredible, right? Everybody, everybody's seen the Incredibles, right? That's like one of my favorite, like 3D animated Pixar movies. They're incredible because it's hard to believe what they can do. You don't want your business to be incredible. Okay. You want your business to be very credible. You want everybody to believe that you are in business and that you're a real person behind the scenes and we can help. All right, so who are we? We're Nove. Okay, I'm going to show you exactly how we help businesses nationwide scale with a $50,000 funding guarantee. We give you access to tools, resources, and mentorship. So just imagine all the free information that you got just now, but imagine it now in a way where we're giving it to you, where you're, we're walking you through hand in hand, helping you hit each metric, helping you hit, um, helping you reach each mandatory compliance item making sure your business is set up credibly, helping you get set up with those business CRAs in lockstep, in order, because you can really mess yourself up by going out of order and then help you get funded guaranteed. We have an entire funding team where all they do is stay on the phone helping businesses get funded all day long. We've been established since 2014, over 100 million funding uh, deals have been uh, done through Nove, uh, powerful fintech solutions. We have phenomenal leadership. We have testimonials all over the place, near perfect review scores, an A plus rating with the Better Business Bureau. Uh, so I just want to let everybody know, like what we're doing here is really trying to, and and we're succeeding at changing the way people run and start their businesses. Okay, so let's just hear from uh, some. Uh, Oh, here we go. Um, we're actually going to uh, break down exactly what is in the Nove Money Business Credit Suite. Now, think about this. 46% of small businesses are using their personal credit. Remember, I said the more you use, the more it hurts you, right? So it hinders your ability to be successful in your business. Once you tap that card out, you can't get no more inventory. And since your personal credit is low, you can't go get another card. What in the world? That's, that's backwards. You're not going to grow like that, right? But Nove, we help you build those two separate profiles. First thing we're going to help you do is enhance your personal credit. We're going to dispute all the negative items that's on your personal credit. How do we do that? We have AI-powered software, all right? So you'll be able to have access to the software. It's going to connect directly to your personal credit account, identify all the negative items on there from collections to charge-offs to bankruptcies, repossessions. And then we're going to generate the dispute letters using AI technology. This, listen, we have AI that can drive cars. We have AI that drives airplanes or flies airplanes, right? Now we have AI that can dispute your negative items and it uses machine learning as well. So what worked for Jamil, what worked for Coach, what worked for Gina, what worked for Monet with that same creditor. Now we're going to come in and now here comes Cassandra and she has that same line, um, that same creditor on her account that's giving her problems. We know it worked for these people. Now the machine says, here, Cassandra, here's a letter that we know is going to work. 
All right. So it generates it like that. It's really brilliant. You get an entire year of access to that. It's a six hundred dollar value. All right. Then we're gonna get you access to something called a business credit suite. It's basically training like a college course for business credit. Now, you know, you're taking those online courses. You probably thought it was going to be easy when you took it, but then you realize that, wow, I've got to do this and this and this and this and this before I can get to the next chapter. Then I can get to this. Then the next module opens up. Well, listen, business credit is very complex. So we have it arranged just like a college course online. All right. But you're not in it for yourself. I mean, by yourself, because you're also going to have a business credit advisor to walk you through each step. So what if you get stuck on, hey, I don't know where to go to get my um, business CRA. I don't know how to how to do that. Well, now you got a number you call. You can't do that with these gurus selling courses online. OK, these gurus are not available by phone. All right. But you have that help here. OK, but all in all, you're after the money. So intelligence is great, but applied knowledge is the power. Now you've applied the knowledge. Now let's get you rewarded. All right. So you it's a one-stop shop. Now that same business credit advisor knows when you're ready for funding. Hey, look, you're ready for funding. Let me get you over to our funding manager. Boom. They transfer you over to the funding manager. And now they're talking to you about getting the money that you've been trying to get this whole time. So we have the largest lending data, be, data resource here. We even have companies that don't lend to anybody unless it's one of our members, okay? We have companies that, that quit and close their doors to the public, but are only open to people that go through this program. Why? Because lenders are trying to lower their risk. And if you took the time to go through this program, they know that you are valid, all right? But all of this for $24.95 up front, you save $1,000 just by doing cash, but what if you don't have the $24.95? You're like, Jerry, that's what I'm coming to you for anyway. I don't have the money. Well, listen, we have access to the money for you and we are able to get it to you. No credit check financing. You pay $6.55 down and then $160 per month. That's unbeatable. So now you don't even have to have good credit to take that giant leap and starting your business, getting your business funded, because every entrepreneur should have access to this. But this is a limited resource because there's people behind it. There's uh, a lot of money that we've invested in the infrastructure and even in the personal credit software that you're getting. But let's say you don't want to go that road. You don't have the 655 down. Well, guess what? We have a no money down program for you as well. As long as you have a 620 credit score, we can get you financed with a micro loan. You know, last uh, example that I love to bring up with this is we got a couple um, financed for $10,000, okay? So they applied for this and they got, you only need $24.95, but this couple, couple was offered $10,000. So now 2,500 goes to the credit suite. They still have 7,500 left over. Don't you know you can build business credit so much faster when you have money sitting in your bank account? Even the bank will offer you a line of credit just for having that much cash, okay? So this is what I'm saying is we have lowered the barriers to entry to getting business credit, and we're giving you the money to do so. Let's hear from Brian. Hello, my name is Brian. I want to let, let everyone know that, hey, this is a very, very great product, the, the business credit and funding suite. I received great, great service from my business credit coach, as well as my financial consultant who walked me through all the funding that my business could get approved for. Um, awesome product. I was able to obtain my 50K within a matter of uh, three, to, excuse me, three to four months. And I'm pretty sure that, that I am going to be sending many, many clients your way for helping me uh, with the funding that I needed for my business uh, with the business credit suite. And thank you, Brian, for that, because so many people want to know how fast does it take to get the money? You know, I hear you saying 50,000 guaranteed, but you know, how long is it going to take? Well, he said three to four months. Wow. Now, what if you get in here and you're kind of dragging your feet because you got access to everything, you know exactly what you should do, but you're like, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it next month. Well, it's going to take you a little bit longer to get to the results. 
but it's all about the people who are dedicated and determined to changing their financial destiny. Those are the people that are going to get in here, get the job done and do it fast. And now they're growing their business. And as you can see, we have truckers, we have real estate uh, professionals, investors. Here's, here's Christine's story. She started with the business credit suite and now she's up here at $300,000 line of credit from RTS to help build her business. And she's posting a little bit, but we have other people that are posting as well. Success stories are getting approved, $70,000, $7,000, $10,000, $16,000, all in their business name. Look at that $20,000 approval. Okay. Now it's separate from your personal. What that again means is that you can build this without having to worry about a default without having to worry about if you go out of business, now they're going to come after my house, right? This is built in your business's name, 100,000 in funding, 26,000 in funding. What would 50,000 do for your business? Let's just start there, okay? So uh, just think of one thing that you would do with $50,000 and drop it in the chat for me. Just just one thing. Like, man, if, if I have 50 grand right now, I tell you what, I would, what would you do? Fill in the blank for me. Let's let's see some examples and shout out your business. If you haven't put your business in the comment section, all right? And I can give you some ideas here, but I know your mind is already going crazy. Like, man, 50 grand, that's that's really what I needed. I needed that so I could mm, fill in the blank for me. Monet Long says, market, market, market. Oh, I hear you. That's the very first thing on my list. Uh, Coach Brian says, look, I need cameras for content. And guess what? Equipment and technology. Did y'all see my list before I put this out here? Jamil says, definitely marketing. What about inventory and supplies? What about recruiting talent? I just talked to a, a dispatcher the other day who says, look, I need drivers for my trucks. But other other companies are out here. They're giving them bonuses like here, the $5,000 signing bonus. I can't compete with that. Well, now she can, right? What about opening up a new location? All right. Antoine says, stab. That's it. Cassandra says, marketing. Jamil says, marketing. Yeah, definitely. Marketing and put the money down for a first multifamily investment property. That's right, Gina. Professional service professional services, the website development, paying off debt. But bottom line is you get to create a legacy your way. Okay. So many times we are, feel like we're shackled by not having the money that we need. So now we have to make decisions just like coffee shop A, where it's not the best decisions for business, but it's what you can afford right now. And it's no uh, shot at coffee shop A, but they just didn't know any better. But now you know better and you have help and you have access to the money to get the help to get the money. OK, so there's really no reason that you uh, have to lose at this moment. Listen, there's three types of people right now. You know, one person says, hey, I'm not interested. Uh, I'm satisfied with building my business the hard way. You know, we get it out in the mud over here. OK, I'm building business like my parents built their business and their parents built a business or maybe your first generation. And you want to say, I didn't have to borrow money from nobody and I built my business. Right. And that's totally fine. But maybe you do know somebody that needs business funding or maybe you're saying maybe you say, hey, look, I'll give it a shot. Or maybe you're person number two. I have some questions before I get started. And if you have questions, I'm going to open this up in just a second. So be prepared with your question. Uh, and number three says, hey, I'm ready to get started right now. How do I enroll and launch my business today? That's the kind of people I love to work with because, again, it's all about the hungry. You know, and some people, they wait until they're desperate to do something. You don't want to wait until you hit rock bottom. You want to do it today while you still have energy. While, you know, tomorrow isn't promised, we already know that, but you don't want to wait until it's harder for you to get started. Do it now when it's easy, when you have the money, when you when you're up in spirits, you know, before all these negative things happen to make you say, you know what, I have no choice. I'm in a corner. I need this. Don't do that. Do it now. Right. So how do you enroll? You just click on your inviters link. OK, you're going to get an email with with a link in it right now that's going to share with you how you can uh, go ahead and get this business credit building program you just go ahead and select the 2495 or uh you know the you can apply for the no money down program it's all right there on the site 
enter in your payment details and you'll have access to the suite within one business day. All right. So what questions do we have, everybody? And if you're signing up today, welcome to Nove. Thank you for taking the time out. How do we do with time? 55? Okay. Okay. That's not bad. 50 minutes. We got started five minutes later. So um, you just got a crash course, a college course in building business credit. Let me know what questions you have. Um, and we're going to go ahead and get out of here. Okay. Going once. Any questions? Going twice. All right. All right, everybody. Well, thanks so much for coming on out once again. Check your email. You, you're going to get some access to these resources. You're also going to get a free guide to building business credit um, in your email. So check that out and definitely, definitely, definitely get back with the person that got you on here and just let them know you're a one, two or three. All right. Take care, everybody. Thanks so much for coming. Bye.